Hello everyone, as always, I hope you're doing well and what a journey it has been to get to this point. But I'm so excited about this journey because I know who guides and directs me, if you will. Let's turn to John. I'll start reading at chapter five, verse number one. After there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos, and these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, Sir, sir, I, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And, 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 and while I'm making my way, someone else steps ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, it, It's the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered, The man who, who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and, and walk. They asked him, who is, the man, who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had disappeared in a crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Wow. John's presentation of Jesus' public ministry, uh, he does a lot of work to set the foundation for this atmosphere because he tells his readers about uh, what took place in chapter 2 at a wedding in Cana where Jesus was among the crowd. They gave out a wine and then he turned water into wine and people were amazed. And he also shows where he has done many signs. Uh, he was at the, the, the cleansing of the temple, talking about John, talking about Jesus. And Jesus cleansed the temple, talking about his father's house. And people saw this took place among a crowd. And at this particular point in our text, John is saying that it was one of the festivals that was taking place in Jerusalem. Now, you got to understand what happens at, at festivals, Jewish festivals at that, because people from all over the land come to Jerusalem to celebrate, not just Jews, but also the leaders of the church. And these are the people that are among the crowd at this festival it was a time it was packed from wall to wall and Jesus in his public ministry is doing exactly what the Messiah the Messiah would do however there are those who don't recognize these characteristics now and Bethsaida there are these five porticos and look at the crowd that John says is there. It was invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. See, around these five pools, there was many people there. Because this community of, uh, of, of Jews, this community period, had a, a belief that once the water was stirred, they could get in and they could find healing at these pools. And this was a known fact. Uh, however, 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 when Jesus steps on the scene he knew one of those people who were were ill had been there for 38 years he knew and he chose him out of everybody there 
he was chosen among the crowds. I got to say this real quick. I don't want to stop here, uh, but it was no happenstance that you uh, were chosen from the crowds uh, for purpose because you got to see Jesus. And John said that Jesus chose this particular man because he knew him. He knew how long he had been there. He knew what was going on with him. He knew what was wrong with him. And he, Jesus, John said that Jesus said, Do you want to be made well? Look at this setup. Jesus already knowing everything about this man. Knowing why he is here. Jesus knows what the belief is about these porticos, about these pool. He knows there's no doubt about it. He is the Messiah. But yet and still, he asks this probative question. Do you want to be made well? And it's not the fact that uh, Jesus asked this question. The fact is that this is the setup. And just in case you missed that, let me say it this way. And Jesus being the man that he is, being the Messiah and this foreknowledge that he had, he was sodden this man up. That's how we'd say it in Mississippi. He was sought up. Soon as Jesus stepped on the scene, he was sought up. Soon as he was chosen. And this man answered him. In all desperation, he answered him, I have no one to put me into the pool. These people uh, keep getting in front of me as I make my way. And as soon as I get there, you, 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 hey, sir, do you hear me? As soon as I get there, someone has already beat me to the pool. <sighs> Look at the probative value. The believer has to look at the probative value of this, this encounter. It, it would seem as a chance encounter, but nothing happens by happenstance. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of your desperation and the probative question has been asked? It's, it's ringing so loud in your head, but because of your desperation, you can't seem to find the answer to the question. Do you want to be made well? Well, do you? I, I, but you so caught up in What's going on in your life? You're so caught up in being friendless. You're so caught up in the desperation that you can't see that the one who knows all about your situation is standing right there before you asking you, do you want to be made well? And this is a position that all believers must take a stance and make a decision. Will we be about what we've always been about? Uh, making money, uh, making our lives better, uh, getting to a point where we are popular and everybody is coming to see about us. Everybody is meeting our needs. Oh, especially when we uh, and face these dire moments see what takes place see how the, the the believer in these last and evil days must make decisions that hinge on belief knowing good and well that regardless of what happens to us he knows what we need do you want to be made well this is not a fact of god uh, excuse me jesus uh, but but better yet, the connection that Jesus has with the Father, it is not a fact that they don't know what we need. So I don't know where this, this 
idea or this belief that if you don't have what you need is because you did not ask. Jesus was talking about uh, asking for what you need on behalf of the ministry, not for personal gain. Oh my goodness that is mind-blowing to me because to look at this text that sits before us today and to see this man in his desperation this man that is friendless for Jesus to ask him does he want to be made well suggest that he already knew so what makes us think that he does not know what we need so what do you mean Ask and you shall receive. What do you mean? Just pray about it. What do you mean? Let your petitions be known to God. What do you mean? It is totally out of context. And the only thing you should be concerned about is your decision when that moment steps in your life. When those doors seem to be closing in your face. Do you want to be made well it's a decision that has to be made to disown everything that you once believed in to disown what mama and them thought about to disown what seemed to be uh, realities for other people but seemed to be so distant for you do you want to be made well Oh, what a dynamic encounter that John presents, because this is the first uh, controversy that has taken place, because it is surely rising. All the time that Jesus was doing his public ministry, he was showing uh, the, the kingdom of God in contrast to the traditions of Judaism, and at each point, point somebody had to make a decision not just about uh, what was taking place but if they believed he was the messiah because john presents this theme of disbelief and belief and in every encounter somebody had to be uh, turned upside down to see that uh, jesus is the messiah and how his identity was being manifested. And at the well, this ill man was faced with a controversy. Do he, does he continue to believe in this myth? Or does he believe what's sitting before him? And Jesus said, stand up, take your mat, and walk. And John said that. And during this period, at once, the man was made well, and he took up his mat, and he booked it. Mm, mat in hand. He began, he began to walk. He was made well. And at one point in time, does John say this man was religious? This man was converted? This man was uh, 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 wanting to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? He got what he wanted. He got what he needed and he booked it. Oh man, it ain't like Jesus didn't know that's how it was going to go down because that is a part of the setup. John continues to say, as this rise in controversy is coming to a head, that it was the Sabbath. You know that everybody knew Jesus' miraculous work, that everybody knew his healing power, that everybody knew who this man was. You can go back to uh, chapter 2, verse 23 through 25. Everybody was coming to Jesus because his miraculous work, and he couldn't trust himself with them. But here in this point, the man was set up on the Sabbath. He was made with purpose. To run like he did because this man would encounter 
the leaders of the church. And this man would come face to face with the Pharisees after having experienced the Messiah. These church folk were concerned about one one thing and one thing only this man carrying his mat he was in violation of the law what is you doing carrying that mat don't you know you ain't supposed to be working on the day truly if this man had been at that pool for 38 years john says this man was ill. This man was friendless. Now he got he got a pep in his step. And all they are concerned about him is him breaking the law. And this man, not a joyous man, being only concerned, he told me to do it. The Jews in their arrogance. The Jews. But the Jews, although they were standing in a position to uh, that presents them as being arrogant, they were just doing what God had established through Moses. They were honoring the traditions of Judaism. But they are the ones that should have known. Not only was this man sitting there for 38 years, but something had transpired. And it had transpired on the Sabbath. And it had wonder working miracle written all over it. And it could have been and it could have only been done by the one they were waiting on. The Messiah that seems to suggest for us modern day believers, us contemporary believers who are waiting in this delay, who have been taught by the testimony of the apostles what to pay close attention to in these last days. Because Jesus said himself during the last days that prophecy would be fulfilled, that prophecy being that the there will be wars and rumors of wars that there will be famine like never seen before we have been prepared for who is to return so don't get so locked into your focus and trying to honor the things of god but have your focus in what Jesus said would take place. Oh, look at this second controversy. What took place after the pool? These Jews were confronted once again. This controversy confronts once again the belief system. So what has take what has been good for mama ain't good for me. We have to take a stance and pay close attention to not what Jesus can do, but who Jesus is. It ain't enough to be able to uh, uh, hold up the traditions of the church. You got to be able to shake off that belief system and see what is in line with what Jesus was teaching. Do you believe what he taught? Do you believe what the apostles passed down? Do you believe that there is a, 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 a fluid motion that the believer must live his life in so that we are not so wrapped up in, in works righteousness? We are not so work well wrapped up in how we look we are not so wrapped up in holding traditions in the line we're not so wrapped up in that we can't see when the holy spirit is at work oh 
don't let me go there. Oh, but you don't let me go there. I want to stay in the context of John because John is focusing on the belief factor. John is focusing on make, uh, making sure that these these readers see Jesus identity and not his works but these church leaders oh, these church leaders in the text John says that the man didn't know who did it who was that mass man he has no idea but the text does not stop there because John said that Jesus had found him in the temple. What blows my mind is not that the man now knows who Jesus is, but it's what Jesus said to the man. He said, see, you have been made well. Oh, what a confirmation. What an acknowledgement. See, you are well. But this warning that takes place. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Sin no more. He is making sure that this man knows where he came from, knows what has taken place in his life, and knows the if when does if the decision is made to return to the lifestyle he used to live to return to the belief system that he had before he met jesus at that pool there are consequences which seem which suggest to the believers that there is an indictment there now that you know jesus now that you've experienced Experience the goodness and all that he can provide and all that he is. Do not turn back to the way you used to live. Do not make decisions that would be contrary to the things that you have experienced as you walk this Christian walk. As you make decisions that have uh, the, the best interests of, of those that you are relation, in relationship with and are not uh, 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 and are not rooted in your selfish desires. Again, you have been made well. This is not a, a, a story about a, a healing. Uh, this is a story about identifying Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And if you identify him in your life, don't you ever, ever make a decision that would suggest you don't know who he is. Because things can get worse you can return to being friendless you can be return to that uh, a lifestyle of desperation this can happen to you so here these instructions to live life according to christian principles because there is a judgment that is going to take place when he returns. And in this delay, as we wait for his return, we must live life according to the fact that when he returns, he will be an eschatological judge. He will be the one on the day of the Lord that says, I know you not, but we have been made well. And we know how to live from this point forward. 
my brothers and sisters, I hope I've said something to bless you. Stay tuned because we have not finished these controversies.